Hey, welcome everybody on this interesting uh, PowerPoint presentation where we already went to talking about simple presentation needs and we've already moved forward to shapes and now we're going to talk about the one that your 10 year old kid is going to love the most, right? You could have, you know, uh, a, a presentation that you've built for something and you gave it to your kid and he gave it back to you and everything turned around and you're like, wow, how did that kid do that? Well, he just played around with the buttons inside of PowerPoint, right? And uh, we're going to see how we animate things and we move things around PowerPoint. But before I move forward with it, you got to know that animations and transitions do make you look a bit immature if you put too many. It also makes you look like a kid if you have like 10 per slide. Animation has a value. We'll talk about that and when you should use it. But let's first go see how we're going to make it happen. So here I go. Perfect. So here we are. We're in my PowerPoint presentation, and we're talking about the difference in between an animation and a transition, because they're different, but ultimately, they're both types of movements here. So, if you look here, I have animations on one side, and animations affect one thing, not hundreds of things, right? So, one thing, either a line of text, a shape, an image, a chart, a title, right? Or any object that you have in PowerPoint can be animated one at a time. That's an animation. A transition is different. A transition is what transition, what is your slide going to do when it goes to the next slide? So it's the bigger picture of it. So you see here, if I move back in my presentation, you can see that I have a, a pretty fancy uh, transition here going, right? It's even make my computer lag a bit, but you can see how impressive this is. And this is called a transition, right? Not an animation. So how do you create your own transitions and animations? Well, let's do the same thing as we did last time. I'm going to go under the Home tab, and I'm going to insert a title and content slide. And in this one, I'm going to type Animation Testing, right? And I want to make this, anim this title pop in. So what I do is I go under the, the Animations tab. And under the Animation tab, you'll notice that you have animation options. I have some over here and some over here, and I wanted it to pop in. So let's first start about the fact that there are four animation types. There's entrance animations. Those make it so that it's not present when you start the slide and it shows up. Emphasis makes it grow. Wi exit makes it leave and motion paths makes it move. So we're going to try all four of these, but first let's just make this title fly in. Right? So you see, I pressed fly in, and the title, as it was selected, right, now flies in. So I'm going to try running my presentation. I press the presentation button, and you see there's nothing. And I press my mouse, and animation testing comes in. So that's great. But now, let's try, right, something a bit more interesting. So I said that I have entrance, I also have emphasis, I have exit, and I have motion path. So let's try all four of these, right? So I'm going to try entrance here, I'm going to go under transition, uh, animations, and we're going to try an entrance animation. So these ones, we're going to use uh, bounce, right? So this one bounces in, then emphasis is going to be something that emphasizes. So we're going to use um, grow shrink, which is going to make it grow. We're also for exit, we're going to uh, make this one exit and leave. So you see we're going to make this one bounce out and it's going to bounce out to leave. And the motion path is also very interesting because that one's going to let me move my uh, file in a certain way. So I'll use loop, right? And you see what it does? It's going to loop the title around. And I can control the size of this loop and uh, how much I want it to do. And you see now, if I go on my screen, I can run my slideshow. And I'll have to click the mouse for every animation. So look at this. I click my first one, I get my title. I click my second one, I get my entrance. And as you see, it wasn't there before, and it came in. Emphasis was always there. If I click emphasis, you see it grows. Right? Exit was there now, but when I'm going to click, it's going to leave. So it's not in the presentation anymore. And motion path will simply move. Right? So you can use all of these four animations to produce some really cool looking animations inside of uh, PowerPoint. But I want you to notice this one, two, three, four, and five. These are the order of clicks. So if you go one, two, three, four, five, then it means five clicks. But you can click on the number and go here on top and say that you want it to start not uh, when clicked, but with previous. You can't see it pro pro properly now, so I'm just going to try to get myself out of the way over here. And uh, if you see here when I go and went click, I can say that I wanted with previous. So I can choose all of these animations here 
to start with previous. What this means is that now, if I press the button, as soon as I click once, they will all go ahead and go. It's going to be crazy, right? So that's a bit insane. Maybe it would be better if they did it all after previous. So what this is going to do is it's going to do one, then another, then another, then another. So let's try it. I click, and you see it does this one. It brings this one in. It emphasizes. It exits. And once it's done exiting, the motion pass starts. So animations can be done either on click for one, so you can make them all do at the same time, or you can make some wait and some uh, be patient. The best way to work with it is to open the animation pane. And in here, you can see what's happening with your animations and what's going first and what's going second. Uh, my face is a bit of in the way, so I'll move it here. But you see, you can see it. So the animation pane, super important to work with animations, and it makes you be able to create some pretty fancy animations, really. Finally, to complete this little part, I want to talk about transitions. Transitions are important. It's what lets you go from one slide to another. So you see here under the Transitions tab, there are some transitions that you can choose. I'd, if I were you, I'd use the subtle ones, right? I wouldn't use the exaggerated, exciting ones. But for the sake of the class, let's have some fun and try this blinds one. What is that going to do, right? Ooh, wow, that is fancy. Right, let's go on this important note, which we're going to talk about in a second. But there's even crush, right? Look at that. Wow, it's like if it took a... and it crushed it. These animations exist, and they're there like airplane. <laughs> it turns into an airplane and it goes. There's a lot of fancy little ones. There's some outrageous ones. Like, if you can ever pull off Vortex in a meeting, you let me know, right? But this is what it looks like. Oh my god, right? Check this out. It goes completely insane. I wouldn't use it. Right for my life professionally, but you want you can if you want, and uh, just to finish, uh, I have some uh, some wow, what is this? Some important notes on animations. Don't go overboard, right? You saw me just do that one. It was a bit overboard. It's a bit too much, right? This is supposed to be a light feature. Less is more, right? You use to help to get attention, to humor your people, or to highlight an important point, right? Um, just so that you can see everything here, I'll move it again. Transitions are better if you stick to one or two for your whole presentation, right? Trying to use something minimal to not confuse or daze your participants. So ultimately, you're supposed to use things that create movement to generate entertainment, to generate passion, to generate interest in what you're saying. If you're using it every time and you're not thinking of its purpose, you're not using it right and people are not going to like you. So try to use animations for the right reasons and I will try to teach you how to do some more of it. So thank you for coming to this transitions and animations part. I'm going to check it off because it's done now, right? But the next one is pictures, and that's going to be fun because it's going to be like learning a bit about Photoshop.